Okay, let's talk about carbonation. Um, I've gotten a lot of questions recently about how to force carb a beer, um, which is pretty much exclusively how I carbonate my beers now. I'm going to give two examples of how to force carb a keg. Uh, the first one is just the shake method, and the second one is using a carb stone. So the first one, you actually don't need any extra equipment um, except for you know your keg and your CO2 system. And the second one, you'll need a carb stone uh, with the lid that goes with it. Um, and they're relatively cheap. I got mine on Amazon for I think like $25. Um, and I'll link below to the one that I have. And uh, I've got some instructables and carbonation charts for which style gets what carbonation below. So force carbing using the shake method. So this is the keg that I'm going to do with that system. This is my pineapple guava pineapple IPA actually. And so I've got uh, this keg has a gas release valve, which actually makes your life a lot easier. I strongly suggest getting these kinds of lids because I have a bunch of the old ones too and they kind of suck. To release any pressure, you basically have to attach a gas in, like, attachment, uh, one of these, and it's a hassle because I can never find them. First, uh, when you transfer your beer, uh, you are going to want to do it a couple days after you hit your uh, or final gravity uh, solely because the yeast needs some time to finish eating up all the crap that's in your beer. So if you transfer and then cold crash it really quickly, basically the yeast all go to sleep and they aren't active enough to be able to eat up any uh, residual off flavors like diacetyl. Um, which gives your beer like a buttery popcorn flavor. Uh, it's actually what they use to uh, make the like fake butter in popcorn. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, don't rush it. Uh, carbonate when your beer is ready and then you can carbonate it really quickly. So like basically I leave most of my beers in the fermenters uh, for about honestly like three weeks and I don't like to drink a beer that's like less than a month old um it's just personal preference i feel like they're finally gotten all together at that rate um so uh, a lot of people suggest cold crashing your beer before you carbonate which uh i mean not even cold crashing just like getting it down to as close to 32 degrees as you can um i don't do this because i am lazy so i am um, Basically, the reason you would want to do that is because uh, carbon dioxide dissolves much better in cold beer versus warm beer. So if you're doing a warm beer uh, force carb, you kind of have to crank the CO2 up a bit. And I mean, I still do mine at 30 PSI, which is what people suggest doing when you have your beer cold as well. But I, it's always worked for me. So. Okay, so how we do this is we are going to connect our gas line to our liquid post. So the reason you want to connect it to your liquid post is because you want the gas to go all the way down to the bottom and bubble up through your beer. So it basically is just helping you out. There's You can connect it to the gas line, but it's just going to sit on top and yeah, you're going to shake it, but why not take the help that you can get? So I'm going to go ahead and connect my gas to my liquid line. So now that I have my gas line on my liquid post, um, I'm going to turn up the CO2 to... Well, you can already hear it going and I haven't even turned on any. So that's just residual of what was in the line. And then I'm going to turn it up to 30. Okay, so now that I've got it up to 30, I'm going to roll a keg around on the floor um, 
for, I usually do it for five minutes, but I do have to serve this beer tomorrow, so I think I'm going to do it for 15 minutes. And I've also read that you can do it up to 30 minutes, so I think it just kind of depends on how quickly you need the beer done. So I'm going to just grab a blanket, roll it on the floor for 15 minutes, and then I'm going to stick it in the kegerator. Leave your gas connected when you're rolling it on the floor. So I like to roll it on a blanket so that I don't disturb Jenny downstairs because I'm right above her bedroom right now. So I'm going to remove the gas line um, until this is all chilled down in the kegerator because if I turn down the PSI on it, the negative pressure will suck the beer into my regulator and I don't want that. So I like to just let it sit and take in the 30 PSI CO2 and then in the morning uh, once it's all chilled down I will purge my regulator basically and attach this back to the gas side in. Uh, so the one with the notches, the gas in, um, and, and just see what the PSI is left at. And I just try to keep it below the PSI that's already in the tank. So if it's still at 30 PSI, which I doubt it will be, um, I'll bleed the gas, um, gas valve so that I can then reconnect it to the gas line, throw it at 20 PSI until I'm ready to serve. And then when I'm ready to serve, I'm gonna remove the gas from the liquid post, obviously because you have to attach the liquid line. And I'll put the gas line back on the gas post and I'll set it to about 10 to 12 PSI. That's typically what I serve at. And I run my kegerator with about six feet of um, tubing. So, uh, from my entire gas line is about six feet in there. Um, and there's like charts and stuff to figure out uh, how much tubing you need for what PSI or the opposite, really. So I'm gonna put this in the kegerator right now and then we can do the carbstone one. Okay, so for the carbstone process. Before you do anything, you need to make sure that your stone is uh, completely uh, sanitized. The best way to do this is to just boil it uh, for 10 minutes. Uh, I actually boil, I boil this whole thing all together. So it's just like metal and silicone, so it should be fine. So. The carb stone, it works because, believe it or not, this looks solid, but it's actually like a mesh. I think it's 0.2 micron or something um, that it forces the CO2 through. And what we're going to do now is, this is the lid for it. So we're going to connect this tubing to this spot on the lid. And then we hook up the gas line to the uh, gas post that's actually on the physical lid. Um, I'm wearing gloves so that nothing gets unsanitary from my dirty hands. Um, I usually don't wear gloves, but what I'm carbonating right now is actually my wet hop IPA. And I really don't want to get it infected at all. I'm very nervous about it. So I'm going to take this lid off, um, drop this in once I assemble it, and purge it with CO2, and then I'm gonna talk about actually carbonating it. So let's start doing this. This is my star sand. And this just slips on really easy.
I'm always nervous that the CO2 I push through, it's actually gonna push this off, but I've never had that happen yet. So just gonna hope that it never actually does happen. So I'm gonna pull this guy now. That's gonna have to get cleaned for other uses. And we are gonna drop this in, don't touch anything. I usually have a really difficult time getting this lid in, and of course, the when I'm actually trying to do it in camera, it works. Very happy about that. Okay, so now we're gonna purge the keg with CO2. So the reason we're doing that is because if we have oxygen in there, it's going to oxidize the beer, and that can make it taste like cardboard. So, um, also on IPAs, if you like a nice orange IPA, uh, oxidizing it will ruin that. So how I'm going to purge this oxygen from here is I'm going to hook the gas line up to the gas post, which is the notched post, and then turn it on a little bit. You can't see it. All right, so I'm just going to pull my release valve. Why is it not working? Oh, you gotta turn your gas on if you want your gas to work. So I'm just letting it fill. And then letting it escape. Technically, carbon dioxide is heavier than oxygen, so in theory, the oxygen should rise to the top where this valve is, um, but I've had people tell me that that's not how it actually happens, so still up for debate. People say to do this like 10 times. I usually do it like five. There's not a ton of headspace in here, so. One more for the road. All right, I'm pulling my gas off of there. So this just has CO2 in it and beer now. Um, so. What we have to do now is we have to connect the gas line to the gas post on the lid that's connected to the carb stone. And you can actually get away with a lower PSI than you can with the shake method. So I like to use around 15 PSI. And then this, so this beer isn't cold. It's uh, like, it's the brewery's temperature. So it's like 65 degrees. Um, so my favorite thing to do is to hook it up and just let it chill in the firm, in the kegerator all night and on 15 PSI. And then by the time that I wake up tomorrow, A, it's going to be mostly cold, but it probably won't be fully cold until around noon. And it'll be completely carbonated. And then, uh, I mean, it's only at, fi it's at 15 PSI at that rate. Uh, it'll never be a higher PSI than you're pushing into it. Um, so I just, uh, once I'm ready to serve it, I, you can technically leave it on the carb stone, but uh, sometimes you'll wanna use the lid again. So you can move it over to the normal gas post and then, you know, you'll hook up your beer to your liquid line. It's just super simple and I need to get more of these lids actually. Uh, because I am constantly procrastinating and having to serve beer that I have transferred the night before. Um, so it's kind of a lifesaver. I strongly suggest getting one. If you start with uh, your beer being cold already, you can actually carbonate it pretty instantly. Um, so set it at 15, let it go. Uh, you're, it's recommended you wait a couple hours before serving it uh, just so all the CO2 is dissolved and everything and you're not getting a mouthful of 
spicy CO2. I got a nose full of it earlier and it was not pleasant. I'm gonna show you how to hook this up. It's very simple. And I'm gonna set my PSI to 15 to do it. It's already there. Um, but I'm going to actually then move it into my kegerator and I have other lines inside my kegerator that I've fed through the back. But this is how you do this. Mm -hmm. 